see me. Casey, good to see y'all. Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. It's a Resurrection Sunday. I'm not one of those preachers that feels like I have to preach messages for every holiday. I don't have to preach a lot of them. That may be a mistake. I don't know. I just don't. But I always <coughs> preach about Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Because he rose from the dead. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's what separates us from every other so-called religion on this planet is a risen Savior. Amen. That's right. Amen. And let me tell you something. He didn't rise just spiritually. He arose spirit, soul, and body. Yeah. Amen. And he's still alive. Amen. Some two, a little over 2,000 years later, he is still alive. Hallelujah. And he says he is the resurrection. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Not me. What? The yeah. resurrection. We celebrate that. He's not the future resurrection. He's the resurrection right now. Hallelujah. Yeah. Paul said, Moreover, brethren, this is 15, 1 Corinthians 15, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received and in which you stand, by which also you were saved. If you hold fast that word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you first all that which I also received that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. And he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And then he was seen by Cephas, then by the twelve. After that he was seen by over 500 brethren at once of whom the greater part remained to the present but some have fallen asleep. After that, he was seen by James and by all the apostles. Then last of all, he was seen by me also as by one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, who am not worthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly that they all, yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. Therefore, whether it was I or they, so we preach, and so you believe. Now, if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty, and your faith is also empty. Yes, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he did not, who he did not raise up, if in fact the dead do not rise. If in fact the dead do not rise. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men the most pitiable. But now Christ is risen from the dead and Amen. has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. But each one in his own order. Christ the first fruits, afterwards those who are Christ at his coming. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom of God to the Father, when he puts an end to all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is dead. For he who has put all, for he has put all things under his feet. But when he says all things are put under him, it is evident that he who put all things under him is accepted. Now when all things are made subject to him, then the Son himself will also be subject to him who put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Otherwise, what will they do who are baptized for the dead if the dead do not rise at all? Why then are they baptized for the dead? 
And why do we stand in jeopardy every hour? I affirm by the boasting in you which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily. If in the matter of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantage is it to me if the dead do not rise? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Awake to righteousness and do not sin, for some do not have the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. But someone will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Foolish one. What is sown is not made alive unless it dies. And what you sow, you do not sow that the body shall be, but mere grain. Perhaps wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as he pleases, and to each seed its own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of animals, another of fish, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differs from another in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption. <laughs> it is raised in incorruption. It is uh, sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, but it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural, and afterward the spiritual. The first man was of the earth made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of dust. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. As we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Many of us have had loved ones that have passed, you know, we call it past. They just pass from this life into the real life. You know, it's like we put a car in a garage and we're not going to use it for a while. We cover it with a tarp and we shut the door. But one day, we decide we're going to drive it again. And there's going to be a trumpet sound that will blast from heaven. It'll be that shofar, right? It won't be that shofar, but it'll be a shofar. Because when it mentions the trumpet, that's what it's talking about, a shofar sound. It's one like no other. There's no, not one like it anywhere. And it will sound and it will be heard in all three ranks. And those who are, have went before us and are asleep, <laughs> they're coming up out of those graves with a brand new spirit body just like Jesus has today, resurrected from the dead, and they will live forevermore. Amen. That's the body. But let me tell you something. They're still, they ain't dead now. No. They're alive right now. The only thing is that, that body is part like that car in the garage. It's just awaiting the sound. Yes. And it says those of us who remain will be changed in the twinkling of an eye. Mm -hmm. We'll go through that metamorphosis right there on the spot. Now that's talking about the resurrection that is to come. But I want you to know you can experience a resurrection right now in your life. Amen. Today. Because there's some dead stuff in our lives. Yes, 
But there is a real resurrected king. Go with me to John chapter 11. I want us to look at something today. I want us to talk about walking in this resurrection power. Putting on resurrection power now. You know, God gave us a word last week. And I've, been, I've been praying it just like he had. God said, if you keep saying it's coming, it'll always be just coming. All that is is hope. God said, what I prophesied, what I said is a right now word. It's for today. The reason it's taking you so long to get it is you keep putting it off into tomorrow. And God said, I'm not operating in tomorrow. I am the God of now. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And he just didn't say, I am going to be resurrected. He said, I am. Before he ever rose from the dead, you know what he said? I am the resurrection. I am the life. How many of you know God knows the beginning from the end? For a long time, I tripped all over that. I said, God, what's that mean? You know the beginning from the end. You know God don't dwell in time with us? How many of you know it's not, it's not whatever time it is right now with God? God's already been there. <laughs> God said he knew me before the foundation of the earth. Before I ever created the earth, he already knew me. Already seen all my days. Knows my end and the end of anybody I leave behind. Already knows all that. Already been there. How I many you know it says the lamb was slain before the, from the foundation of the earth? So Jesus didn't just become the resurrection when he rose from the dead. He was already the resurrection. Yeah. How many of you know that? Yeah. Amen. That should mean something to you. Because guess who dwells in you? Amen. <laughs> guess who dwells in you? Hallelujah. Amen. Chapter 11 of John. Now a certain man was sick. Lazarus of Bethany. The town of Mary and Martha. Everybody there? Y'all got that there too? Okay. It was that Mary. Who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil. And wiped his feet with her hair. Whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore the sister sent to him saying, Lord... Behold, he whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now, some people will take that and say, Well, see, God gets glory out of sickness. That wasn't at all what he was talking about. We're going to see that. Now, Jesus loved Martha and his sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, lately the Jews sought to stone you. And are you going there again? Jesus answered, are there not, are there not 12 hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. These things he said, and after that he said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go, that I may wake him up. Then his disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get well. However, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought that he was speaking about taking rest and sleep. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sake that I was not there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Can we stop right there for just a second? Can I tell you something about your Lord you may not know? You know why Jesus didn't go? Because his heart is such that if he had looked at Lazarus, he, was, he would have healed him. He couldn't have helped himself. When he saw the sickness, he would have, he would have healed him. So he had to remain where he was at. Because he was going to show us something for all of man to see forever. Right? But, he, but if he had went, he could not have helped himself. He would have raised him up. Because he already knew he was dead. He said he's dead. But I go. <laughs> I go to wake him up. I like that. Then Thomas, verse 16, who is called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us go that we may die with him. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now that's significant. 
Nobody had ever went behind that tomb and come out after one day, two days, or three days. But the Jews had a, a, a myth, a belief, that the spirit hung around the body for at least three days. So if he had raised him before that fourth day, they might have said, well, you know what, maybe his spirit just went back into the body. So Jesus, how many of you know we got a God when he raises something from the dead, he makes sure it's stinking before he raises it so that you know he did it. You remember when Elijah was up on the mountain and he was going to bring down fire? He put as much water as they had on that thing to make sure that when that fire came down to heaven, everybody knew that's a God fire. Maybe you've got something in your life that you don't think can ever change. Maybe you're depressed. Maybe you're going through something. Maybe your marriage is going through something. Maybe your relationship with Jesus ain't what it's supposed to be. Maybe you haven't talked to him in a long time. Maybe you don't think, hey, there's no life left in this thing. There's nothing. It's just dead. It's, it's graveyard dead. I want you to know that he can bring it to life this morning. He can bring it to life this morning. Your health may be gone. Everything may look like it's over. It may look like it's dead, dying, and buried. But I'm here to tell you, he's still the resurrection of the life. Hallelujah. He can bring it from the dead if you'll believe it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. you got to believe in the right now God. you got to quit believing for tomorrow. Because today is the day of salvation, Amen. says the Lord. Amen. So when Jesus came down, he found that he'd already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away. And many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. We've all been there, haven't we? Now Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary was sitting in the house. Martha gets a bad rap, but I want you to listen about this Martha here. She knew some things. That's right. Now Martha, now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And she's absolutely right. <laughs> but even now, even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. <laughs> Jesus said to her, Woo! Hallelujah. Jesus said to her, <laughs> Jesus said to her, I am! I am! I am! I am! I am! The resurrection and the life. I am! I'm not, I'm going to, I'm not, I used to be. I'm not, I'm going to be. I am the resurrection. I am the life. I am the resurrection. I am the life. God. I'm not the God who's going to heal you tomorrow. I'm the God who will heal you today. I'm not the God who's going to save you sometime in the distant future. I am the God who will save you right now. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not the God who will put your marriage back together sometime way down the road. I'm the God who will resurrect it today. I am the resurrection and the life. <laughs> Hallelujah. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. That's our relatives of John. And I listen to those of us sitting here today. But whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Then he asked the question, do you believe this? That's the question he's asking us, do you believe this? Oh, we may park the car in the garage. But we ain't never going to die. Amen. Because see, I was already dead. Because the Bible said I was dead in my transgressions and sins. But I already been resurrected once. How about you? See, when it said I got born again, I got born again from death because I was dead just like you were before you were birthed into the kingdom of God. You were dead in your transgressions and sins. And that's the only time you ever going to have to die again. Well, you park the car in the garage, you burn it, you put it in a mausoleum, 
You bear it six feet on you. It don't matter what you do with it. Sound's coming, and you're going back to get the car. But you're alive. <laughs> you're alive. Because guess who lives inside of you? The resurrected ones inside of us. When you stand there at your relative's side that you know is walked with Christ, let me tell you something. You may put the car in the garage, and we do. We have, we have a ritual because that body is very, very important. That body is holy. That body is so important that God's going to make sure that it rises and stands. The word resurrection, you know what it simply translates to? You'll stand up again. I heard people say, well, we know each other in heaven. You sure will, because that same body that you're leaving behind, it's going to be, it's going to be renovated. It's going to be beautified. It's going to be cleaned up. <laughs> it's going to be made like it's never been made before, but you will recognize because it's your body, and you're coming back to get it. Yeah, you'll know each other in heaven. Sure will. I wouldn't want to go to heaven if I didn't know nobody up there. Amen. <laughs> would you? I don't know my mom. She won't look like she looked in the last few years. She'll have that smile back and it'll be brighter than it ever was. Amen. 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 She never had a gray hair anyway. At 70 years old, there wasn't one gray hair in her head. People said she died of hair. Like you accused Miss Jane of that. <laughs> she don't. She don't put nothing on me. I don't put nothing on mine. I earned every one of us gray. <laughs> I'm just glad they're holding on. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But you know what? There won't be not no gray hair on the head. But you know what? My mama's up there right now. But she's going back to get the car. That car is going to walk again. Amen. 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 Paul, I know you lost your daddy, but he gonna, he's going to walk again. Amen. There's going to be a rise of He's up there walking around. He's enjoying all of heaven right now. We're going back to get the car. Hallelujah. <laughs> We're going back to get the car. Amen. Do you believe this? Yes. She said to him, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who's come into the world. And she made a great confession there. But we're going to see something in a minute. But let me tell you something. This is Martha making this confession. Martha gets a real bad rap. Oh, Mary was a worshiper. Amen. See? You work and worship. Amen. Amen. Martha did both. <laughs> Martha did both. Amen. Amen. Your mama's going to stand up again. Woo, ain't that going to be good for your daddy? Lord have mercy. And when she had said these things, she went her way and secretly called Mary, her sister, saying, The teacher has come and is calling for you. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the town. What was in the place where Martha met him? Then the Jews who were with her in the house and comforting her, when they saw that Mary rose up quickly and went out, followed her, saying, She is going to the tomb to weep there. Then when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying to him, Same thing Martha said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. You know what he said? He groaned in the spirit. I'll never forget when my mom, the night my mama passed, we we got there. Thank, I thank God he let us get there right at the very end. We, we were there for probably the last hour. But my daddy had said to her side of her, 24 straight hours, he wouldn't move. He wouldn't let her go. And he held her hand. He couldn't say, he couldn't say anything. But every night he said, Oh. Oh. I think that's kind of what Jesus was feeling deep down in his spirit. He was, <coughs> folks, he was just like you and me. He was 100% God. He was 100% man. <laughs> he felt pain. He felt that grief. He said he loved them. He said he loved Martha. Loved Mary. Loved Lazarus. And here's somebody he loves. Her. He, he, how many of y'all ever felt somebody else's pain? He felt it. He felt all of it. 
You know what? He groaned for my daddy's groaning that night. He felt it. They said to him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him? And some of them said, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also has kept this man from dying? You see, we already knew he could do that. We already knew he could heal the sick. <coughs> Did we? Then Jesus again, groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. And Martha, don't judge her too harshly. She did just exactly what most of us would have done. Because you've got to realize, ain't nobody ever done this before. Ain't nobody ever came up out of that tomb. Ain't nobody they've ever rolled that stone in front of ever come up out of that tomb. <laughs> so she says, Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench. For he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, he has to remind us, don't he? Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? See, in Martha's mind, she knew he was rise from the dead. She, said, she told the Lord, said, I know. I know that I know that I know that in the resurrection, my brother will rise up again. But she missed something. She missed what God said. I'm present tense God. Yeah. <laughs> I am the resurrection, yeah. and the life. He was telling her, you don't have to wait for tomorrow. You got me today. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So she did what all of us did. She couldn't see past that tomb. Let me tell you something. If I'd been there, I couldn't have saw past that tomb. Wow. If you'd been there, you couldn't have saw past that tomb. Yeah. All she knew was the natural. She said, he's stinking right now, Lord. Let me tell you something. There may be some stuff dead and stinking in your life, but it don't stop the resurrection and the life. It don't stop Amen. the resurrection Amen. and the life. Ooh. Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? See, we always think he's talking about tomorrow. God's saying right now, church, if you'll believe, if you'll believe, you can see the glory of God right now. Thank you, Jesus. As long as you want to see it tomorrow, you just keep hoping. That's not faith. Hope is never faith. Hope is part of it. It's very important that we gotta have faith. We got hope, but we gotta have faith. We gotta believe for the now. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I said this that they may believe that you sent me. Jesus did not go and heal him. He didn't go because he knew his compassion. He knew his heart. He knew he couldn't help himself. He would have healed Lazarus. But he had to demonstrate for you and I this day and for all the world, all these thousands of years later, that I am the resurrection and the life. I am the one who raises the dead. He's going to rise from the dead, but you've got to know he can raise you from the dead. Right? And he gave you his word for it. That, would have, that should have been good enough. But just to prove it, he's fixing to prove it for all of eternity. Because this man's been dead four days. <laughs> he's been dead four days. Let me tell you something. If you've been dead four days, you are dead. <laughs> Stone cold dead. Amen? <laughs> you are dead. Now when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice. I know some people don't like loud, but let me tell you something, my king gets loud. <laughs> he said the shout, the shout of a king is a moment. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you something, all the way down there in, in, in the paradise, which was right there next, in, next to hell in the beginning. Y'all do know that, right? In the paradise set right across from hell. Remember the story of Lazarus? People will tell you that's a parable. It don't never one time say it was a parable. 
Don't let them Jehovah Witness when they knock on your door tell you there's a parable. There wasn't no parable. There was a real hell right across from there and there was a real paradise. And Lazarus was right there in paradise. But he heard a voice. <laughs> he heard a loud voice. It said, Lazarus, come forth. Let me tell you something. Ever, if there was any keys, if there was any locked doors, all of them had to open immediately. The stone was rolled away, and that body that Rigamore, how do you say it? Rigamortis had already set in all at once. I'm telling you what, life went to flow through every joint, every cell, every bone, the marrow. Blood started flowing, that coagulated, everything in that body came alive, and the man came up, and the only thing still binding him was what said he was dead. The grave clothes. And we know what Jesus said then, don't we? Get that grave stuff off of him. And let him go. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Woo! We need to get some grave stuff off of us. Hallelujah. We need to get some grave stuff yes. off of us today. Hallelujah. Yes. Melanie, we're going to pray for you before we go to worship today. We're going to get some of that grave stuff off of you. Yes. On that left side. How about yes. that? Hallelujah. You know what? If he said Lazarus come forth and the dead man's body could come to life, don't you know that that same resurrected Lord can do something about the left side of your body this morning? Hallelujah. You believe that? Yes. You believe it? Hallelujah. You believe it? You ain't smiling like you believe it. Come on now, smile. You believe it? Amen. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. Lazarus, Thank come forward. And I love this. And he who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Loose him and let him go. Sometimes you'll just lay around. Sometimes you'll just lay around and meditate. How would you like to have been Lazarus? You're down there, you know, you're having a conversation with old Abraham about everything. I mean, you're pretty happy. You're in paradise. Right? I mean, if you're already in heaven, you're already in heaven. Brother Charles has shared the story many times with us about going up to heaven. You know, he didn't get, he didn't get make it into heaven, but he saw the Lord. And he didn't want to go back. You know? Lazarus, well, I'm sure, was having a real good time down there. But he heard a voice. Matter of fact, I think Carmen made a song about that, didn't he? Yeah. Somebody? I think I heard yeah, Carmen. Oh, well, I hear somebody talk. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And then you wake up. You can't see nothing. You got something over you, but all at once, <laughs> there's some kind of life inside of you that you just can't lay down on that thing. You've got to move as best you can. I mean, there's just so much life in you. You're just a bounce. <laughs> you're hot. <laughs> oh, that's what you still found up. You still found up. That's what happened to us when we got born again. There was so much life in us. We was moving. There was life in us. But we then in the process of getting some grave clothes off of us for a long time. Right. Hallelujah. Everything that was dead. Everything that said we were still dead in our transgression and our sin, the Lord has been loosening us. Hallelujah. Using one another. Hallelujah. I mean, you know, Jesus didn't go take the grave clothes off. He let somebody else do it. He let all those stand around. You know what church is about? It's about getting grave clothes off. Oh, yeah. amen. 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 And sometimes, Melvin, when we're still alive, the enemy will try to come and put some grave clothes on us. Come on up here. I'm not trying to embarrass you. How many of you know Melanie had a stroke about when about the prayer? Yes. When was that last Saturday? Friday? Yeah. Now, tell me what's going on. That left side there. Come on, elders. Amen. Woo! This is this the side that's affected a little still a little weak? Can you move it? What all can you do with it? Huh? A little bit. A little bit? Can you what can't you do with it? Huh? Can't hold stuff with it? Not do it. Not do it. You want to? Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Praise God. How many believe the resurrection and the life can do it right now? Yes. Hallelujah. See, this, Hallelujah. This, this, this ain't really a sickness, is it? Because you was sick, but you better now. This is the damage that was done by the sickness. So this is 
We need resurrection life in this church. Yes. Right here. You believe you can do it? Show me what. Show me how much range of motion you got and all that good stuff. Tell me what you do. Show me what you can do. Can do. You can't hold stuff to it. You said. Okay. I, if I had you in my Bible, you couldn't hold it. Probably. Mm -hmm. It's pretty big. Yeah. Part of me hold it. <laughs> huh? I mean, you just weak. Okay, so you can't can't do stuff. I know she walked. This one looks a lot, lot more rumbly, kind of kind of like that. Okay, all right. Let's lay hands on that. You know who lives inside of you? Who lives inside of us? The resurrected Lord. Oh Jesus, you are the resurrection and the life. Oh, you are the resurrection and the life. And the enemy came to try to steal Melody's life, try to take her out before her time. He done damage to her body. He done some damage. He put some grave clothes on her, Lord. But Lord, we're here by your authority and by your name. And we're commanding that damage to be undone in the name of Jesus. <laughs> oh, in the name of the resurrected one, we command this arm to have life in it. Oh, we command this arm to come forth in the mighty name of Jesus. For life to begin to flow in this, in this arm, in that begin arm. to flow yes. right now. Life. Strength so begin way. to flow so right way. now. Grip my hand as hard as you can. Grip it. Come on, just grip, grip as hard as you can. Come on. We just expect so that life now to begin to flow. So keep gripping, so keep gripping. Oh, Lord Jesus, let that life flow. <laughs> oh, the resurrection power of the Christ, let it flow right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Resurrected power, come forward. Why don't you pull on? Everything's been disconnected, become connected. Everything's been bruised, be unbruised. Anything, any, any damage done right now, we command it to be undone. Because of the resurrected life. Lord, we command every part of this mind to connect. Every part of this brain to begin to function. All the nerves be restored. Everything be restored right now. In Jesus. Mighty name. Amen. Can you, can you, can you do like that? Can you worship it? Raise your hands and worship. Lord, it's just ain't good for us. Yes. When we worship him, when we're fixing to worship here just a little while, I want you to just start moving your arms.